All right, everybody, you click this video because you do not want to make mistakes. You own chickens or you're thinking about getting chickens and you want to take the best care you can of them. And by no means am I going to consider myself an expert, hence why I'm making this video. Would you say I'm an expert? I've made mistakes, haven't I? This is Sunny, by the way. And this is Chickadee. She's one of more of our feisty hens and she would admit the same thing. We make mistakes. I've been doing this ever since October, so what is that, a half of a year? And I've made mistakes, and the reason I'm making this video is that you guys don't have to make those same mistakes that we did. So that's what I'm trying to wrap up in this video. You guys don't have to make those mistakes, so you're here watching this video so you don't do it. Let me start out real quick with the number one thing for us that's been our mistake, was buying a used coop. Alright, so a used coop by itself isn't the end of the world type of problem. I'm sure there's people who bought a used coupe and it's worked out amazingly for them and good job. It didn't work out as good for us. For this coupe, the problem then, holy smokes, right now these chickens will not stop making noise next to me. Here's a little helpful tip that you can always have, is make sure you always have a pocket full of snacks for them. All right, maybe now I can say it as they're eating on their snacks. So our used coupe for us, the reason it's been a problem is it's almost like when you buy a used car. It just seems like about every two weeks or one month we've had some kind of problem going on that I've had to fix it up. So it's not that it hasn't worked at all. It's gotten by the winter time and in Michigan winter time is cold, very cold. And it made them survive during that time. But we are looking to get our new coupe soon. So this will be all ancient history. And it's one of those things that we got cheap so it seemed worth it at the time. And I'll advise you guys, if you guys can get a new coupe, or you make sure that you take a really good look at the used coupe that you're buying before you do it, because this one looked fine and all right, but I had to do a lot of touching up to it. I even had to do more than I thought to start before we could fit our 10 chickens into there. So definitely number one on our list that I wanted to get out of the way. All right, that leads me into the second thing actually about our coupe. All right, hold on, pocket treats. I'm telling you, having pocket treats is a good idea. The size of your coop for how many birds you're gonna have. You need to consider how many birds you're gonna have. We had 10. Oh man, now this is the one bad thing about pocket treats. They're all just hanging around my feet. So you need to consider how many chickens that you have or are willing to get and what size coop that's gonna fit for your birds. Snowflake here was never this big just a few months ago and not even a few weeks ago, I feel like. And Snowflake's gotten big. So although, this coop right here, although it works for the 10 chickens, the run itself isn't huge. So during the winter time when they were locked up in there and not really getting their free range time in, you wanna go down? During that winter time, it was hard for them. And although they started off kind of like the toddler teenagers when you bring them out, they grow fast because they like to eat. And the faster they grow, more that you thought you had room for 10 chickens, you don't. So make sure that you think about that too. During the nice weather time, during the spring, during the summer, when you have a run for them like this that they can enjoy and be around in, the size isn't as important because that coop, the coop's really just for nighttime or for shelter if they need it. And all 10 of them can fit in there if they need that. So it wasn't like it's crammed to the bone for them in there, but it wasn't ideal for winter time during the run. So if you live in a spot that's a little colder, just Imagine the size of the run and the coop for them for how many birds that you're gonna have. Our next mistake we made is when we went to the store, we were so excited about chickens. We just said two of them, two of them, one of them, two of them, and filled our chicken thing that way because we wanted a variety. But we don't know what kind of the chicken this even is. We thought it was a Plymouth Rock. Uh, she lays an egg that's actually a green or greenish and we don't know what kind of chicken that is. So if you guys can comment below right now what kind of chicken you think this is, that'd be helpful. So we don't know what kind of breed this one is. We have a Buff Orpington, we have two Rhode Island Reds, we have a Barred Rock, and we have two Americanas, which personally are my favorite, and especially this one right here, Sunny. The reason I'm stating all the different kind of breeds that we have, geez guys, are you fighting? I think there might be snacks by my feet. Sonny, you wanna go look? So the reason I mention all the different kind of breeds is that one, we didn't even look into seeing like temperaments of breeds or anything like that. And two, we didn't see how that works mingling different kind of breeds of chickens. And three, I would advise you that if you know what kind of chickens you got, 
write it down on a piece of paper when you go leave the store or when you're there at the store so that you remember because after we got out of the store, we kind of forgot what some of them were even called. So we had to look them up and research ourselves. We still can't even classify what kind of chicken snow is. We did not expect to have three different kind of layers that were laying kind of bluish green. So the fact that snow does really makes me wonder what kind of breed that is. So please comment below. The good thing though, although we've had all these different types of breeds of chicken and not knowing how they were or anything like that, not understanding if they're dual purpose, if they lay more eggs, are they a hardy breed or anything like that, Seems like everyone lasted our cold winter and they've done really good with each other. We don't really see too much pecking and this like strong pecking order that makes you feel like you need to like try to help one of these chickens that's low on the totem pole. They do very good together so we've been lucky in that but make sure that you look into it. It's a pretty cold day so you can see that with strong winds and a little bit of cold weather they like to go by their coop. The one who doesn't though who's always been by herself is Miss Rosie here coming. Which is kind of funny because when they were growing up Rosie was always the last one out of the coop, the last one to eat. She still likes to escape and be by herself a lot, but she does love coming to us, so I don't know. What do you think, Miss Rosie? All right, let's get to another mistake. Another mistake is not caring about what kind of food that you're feeding your chickens. And this one, I really can't stress about how mad we were at ourselves after we thought about it more. I mean, when we first brought our chickens home and we went and got like a small bag of organic chick feed and we were feeling good about it and we were happy that Oh, you know, they're eating good, they're eating healthier. Well, you start to feel a little down in the dumps that you don't want to pay that amount all the time and you end up buying just a really big bag of cheap chick food for them and then you continue that food as they're growing up. It's just like with humans, right? When you're growing up, that's one of the most important times that you can have healthy food while you're growing your body. And that's no different just because it's a chicken. Although we were very upset at ourselves because you are what you eat and yes, you're either going to eat these chickens eventually down the road, sorry if that's not for you, or they're producing eggs for you and you want them to have a good diet in their body so that when those eggs come out you feel good that they're actually truly much better for you than the ones that you'd buy at a store. And I think that's the reason a lot of us own chickens is that you wanted healthier eggs, farm fresh, free ranging. You didn't want those store bought. All these chicks just combined in the smallest little spaces. They maybe get a little sunlight and all just artificial light to help them lay as many eggs as they can possibly do until they're overused. They toss them out, use them for meat and that doesn't sound very healthy. But thanks to our friends over at Grubly Farms, now we don't gotta worry about their nutrition anymore. We've been able to get their Fresh Pecs, which is their chicken feed for their chickens. With Fresh Pecs, it comes in two different kind of styles. You can either get it in pellets or in crumbles. We like the pellets. I love being able to see the grains that are incorporated with them. They have 16% protein, which is gonna make a happy and healthy flock. That protein is made with sustainably grown black soldier fly grubs. Fresh Pecs is farm fresh. It's a natural balanced recipe for bright and creamy yolks. And the good thing about it, it's made without any soy, corn, fish, fillers, GMO foods, or funky byproducts that a lot of the other feeds that are gonna have when you buy them from the store. Our chickens just absolutely love having this feed. And the good thing right now, if you go to visit grublyfarms.com, all orders of new customers are gonna get 25% off their first order. And to top it all off, all orders will ship free. So. If you haven't already and you're looking for a nice healthy food for your chickens, go right now to grubblyfarms.com and order your first. All right, and the last thing that I got, geez guys, I don't have snacks. So now one of the last things that we made a mistake about, oh, someone maybe found a good treat back there. This is another one that goes with anyone who deals with the colder climates at all like we do here in Michigan, and that is getting chicks at the right time of the year. You're probably wondering what that means. Can I just get chicks whenever I want? No, no, and a no. You see, we stalled off on buying the chicks because we didn't know if we were gonna be ready or not, and then all of a sudden we decided, all right, hey, this is it, let's do it. We found a place that was selling them, even though it was colder weather and most of the like, tractor supplies and all those weren't selling chicks anymore. But we found a farm store that was still selling them, and we got them in October. We were excited, we got new chicks, we bought a brooder box that was a good size, we were getting 10 new chicks, everything was going perfect, until it wasn't. Man, as I'm telling this part, it'd be really cool if we had chicks here so I could show you guys the chicks as I explain this part. Actually, I think we did just buy chicks. Let's go see them. All right, so good thing we do have chicks so that I can help explain this next part. I thought it'd be a nice kind of thing to do it with the chicks themselves. So like I was saying, there's a time to get the chicks when you live in a colder climate and a time not to take home chicks. And unfortunately for us, the reason I'm making this video, we got our chicks for the first time around at the wrong time. 
Yes, we're in our bathroom. This is the best spot to put the chicks right now. Another mistake possibly, but we're gonna ignore that. You guys wanna see one of them? They're a little older now. They're kinda getting to that like scrappy looking stage, but they're still looking pretty cute. Let's get one out. We got um, five new olive eggers, and we just got them a little bit ago, and I'm thinking this guy is probably a rooster. He didn't have that big of a tail feather compared to the rest of them when we first got them. So, and I'm assuming just by some of the features on there that this is gonna be a rooster. I don't know for sure, but if you guys would like that video idea maybe in the future about determining your chicks, if they're gonna be a rooster or a hen, let me know in the comments below. The reason I wanna bring up about chicks and the right time to get them and not is that we lived in a colder climate, and like I said, that we brought home chicks back in October. So it was cold, but you just put them in a brooder box with a heat lamp when you first have them. So no big deal, right? I'm gonna put him back down, because I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get a present on my lap in a little bit. Okay, I'll bring you back. And there's a time to get chicks when you're in a colder climate, and October is not that time. The problem was we thought, oh, no big deal. We're gonna get them, not really thinking in the future. And what happens when they finally get to that stage that they're full feathered and they're ready to go, they're ready to go outside. It was December in Michigan, which brings cold weather. So that wasn't going to work. And uh, it did, obviously. They're full feathered. So it just puts them uh, in your house for a longer time. Some people in certain climates, when you have chicks, after about four or five weeks, they can start testing the waters of putting them outside in their coop because it already is 80 degrees outside and stuff like that. That was not the case for us. So our chickens stayed in for about eight, nine weeks inside our house, pretty close to 10 weeks, I believe. And actually, now that I'm just counting in my head, 10, nine, I think it was almost three months. And we probably could have put them out sooner. They had their full feathers, so it wasn't something that we had to worry about that they weren't gonna be able to be warm enough. But it was just that thing that they did have to stay in longer than normal. Like I said, some people can get them out in about five weeks, depending on how hot it is outside. And that was not the case for us. Make sure, depending on the weather and the time of year it is when you take home chicks, if you have colder weather in the climate that you live in, that you think about what you have so that when you have them, like right now, they'll be able to be out now towards the end of April, beginning of May, and it's gonna be a lot warmer here, so we can get them out here at six weeks, seven weeks, and feel more comfortable about it than before. And I know what you guys are thinking, oh, why are you filming yourself and not filming more of the chicks? If you guys wanna see some more chicks, here you go. We got some leftover, um, some beef that we got, and if you're not giving your chickens table scraps, you're missing out. It's gonna make them not eat as much as their feed and it's gonna save you money. And it's food that you're gonna get rid of anyway. So save your food that you don't finish, feed it to your chickens. And they go crazy for it. Watch them. I'm gonna film my feet as I walk. <laughs> so that's not a mistake that we've made, but it's a mistake that people make. So I might as well just throw it in there and while I just did it. Feed your chickens table scraps. And that's what I got for you guys for all the mistakes that we've made. Uh, there's a lot more, I know, mistakes that people make and some common mistakes, but I feel like a lot of people look up those kind of mistakes before they buy chickens, and if you haven't already, do that right now. What I wanted to do was be able to give you guys mistakes that we've made that maybe are a little more unique or things that maybe you don't think about before you buy your chickens. I am getting pecked at down here. What are you guys doing? And being able to watch somebody else make mistakes or hear about their mistakes usually makes you a little bit more cautious, and it opens opens up your eyes to realize that these are things that I might make a mistake on and I wanted to be able to catch you guys and make sure that you were able to see that before those happen to you so just try to make sure you understand that you take your chickens just as seriously as you take you they're producing eggs for you possibly meat in the future and they're another living creature here on this earth and what you can do is give them the best life they could possibly have just like the same thing you would like to do for yourself you want a healthy life you want a healthy chickens although it'd be nice to raise an animal or raise yourself and never make a mistake ever it's gonna happen unfortunately just hopefully you don't make that many of them and you learn from the ones that you make and that's been one of our big things now um, coming through the second time around now that we have chicks it's just learning as you go especially if chickens are new to you you're gonna make mistakes that's just how you learned and the more that you can learn from your mistakes and the more that you can tell others about the mistakes that you've made and open up about those mistakes I think the more of a difference you're able to make so I'm hopefully making a difference in somebody's chicken life now that they have with their chickens but 
If not, I'm sorry. If you found this helpful though, it'd be really helpful for you guys to subscribe to the channel, like the video. Don't be afraid to comment below and let us know that. I love hearing from everybody down below. We try to comment back to everybody that comments. So if you guys can do that for us, we'd appreciate it. And I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you guys in our next vlog. Yeah, you're dirty. See you guys.